There is a moment when an image in a film is so powerful that it becomes part of a culture. How did Cecil B. DeMille get images from the script to the screen? In 1914, DeMille created the post of motion picture art director for Wilford Buckland. Next came concept art. Building on the script, concept art was created not to tell the story, but to show it. There are three key people on a film, the art director, the costume designer, and the cinematographer. These individuals can only convey the director's vision if they know what it is. Cecil made his films on paper, determining every aspect before a single camera turned. Once the concept art was approved, it was turned over to the art director, the costume designer, and the cinematographer. These personnel translated the script and concept art into photographable images. Cecil also used concept art to pitch a project. Paramount executives didn't want Cecil to make Samson and Delilah. Cecil showed them this concept art by Dan Sayer Grosbeck. The project got a green light. As we wrote our book, we entered a treasure trove. There was more than concept art to photograph. DeMille saved items from every stage of the filmmaking process. He saved films, scripts, props, awards, and cultural honors. One of the treasures we encountered was an album of scenes from the King of Kings. The fine art photographer, William Mortensen, had created an album in which each page holds a custom printed photograph, hand finished, tipped in, and signed. The collection also includes the work of some of Hollywood's greatest concept artists.
The correlation between concept art and on-screen image was often very close, even extending to lighting effects. Cecil B. DeMille's extraordinary success must be credited in part to concept art. And we are fortunate that so much of this art survives in the DeMille collection because it can now be appreciated as fine art. Thank <laughs> you.